All right, in this video, we're going to be looking at SQL versus NoSQL and when to use both. And uh, in this video, we're going to be assuming that our application that we're using uh, has the ability to connect to um, multiple backends. In some cases, it doesn't. Maybe we're only using one backend, but we'll assume that we can connect to multiple backends. So we have a couple of uh, backend connection strings. And for the record, um, in this SQL example too as well, something like SQLite would be sufficient. And then in this example as well, NoSQL would also be appropriate for the SQL part if we wanted. I mean, we don't have to use um, either one of these tools uh, or just one of the, or both of these tools. We could use one or the other. So, but this example is uh, just a, kind of a, an example where we're going to combine something which has a format and one that does not. So above the red line, <clears throat> we see uh, a baseline workout which follows a very specific uh, SQL format. And then what we try to do is we try to have, uh, this is just one workout session, we try to fit that one workout session into a SQL format. And what we find is that the data doesn't really line up very well. Like if we were to try to report this, um, you know, like with pull-ups, we have the set, we have the reps, we have the weight, but with jump rope, it's only just a time thing. Um, and there really, even though we have a set, well, there really isn't a set that we're doing it. It's just jump rope. Farmer's walk, same thing. We kind of have the, uh, I mean, don't really want a set, but we have the weight and we have the distance. That one's a little bit different. So below the NoSQL, we see kind of how this would look. And by the way, we're going to actually see a specific Mongo example in a second of this. And then on the right side of the NoSQL below the red line, we see kind of the format of how this would be reported. What we see going on here is data hierarchy, right? So we have pull-ups, we have set, set. And you'll notice that the sets don't need a specific number. We already know intuitively that um, by looking at this, that you know that, that was the first set and that was the second set. We don't need to label it. Um, jump rope, only one minute. That's the only thing we need to know. Farmer's walk, uh, we can determine body weight plus 50 uh, pounds. Oh, okay, so that's the, uh, the weight of 50 meters. It must have been the distance. And then, of course, Tabata. And for the record, I can't remember how the Tabata works, but it's, it's usually a standard set that there's so many rounds, so many reps, um, and then the weight is determined, but you have to kind of finish it. So in the back end, this is what it would look like in MongoDB. Um, what I did actually is I did two workouts, and for the record, I did forget the second set of pull-ups. I, I'm well aware of that, so it doesn't match it exactly. But the idea is the date here, right? So the person who is, let's say, going to the gym, they're saving their information, and um, and we see the pull-ups, we see jump rope, farmer's walk, we see this this structure of the data, right? And then on the next day, we see this person is doing sprints. It's a totally different set, right? In other words, we have the workout, we have kind of a, a sub-document within the workout, which is sprint, we put the sets in meters, but then we do the sets, and it's like an array, and then, of course, we also look at and say, oh, this person experienced pain that day, pain being one. We're going to look at some examples of why we would do that in the future. Uh, but for now, we're going to note this. And then, of course, pay notes. We'll notice that document one and document two don't match at all, right? Um, because we can do this in NoSQL, okay? So it's one of the advantages of NoSQL is these documents can look different. Um, and then we can query on the basis of those differences. But what about our baseline? Well, our baseline... Um, would be exercises that we do to just measure our strength, let's say at the end of the month in this example, and everyone on this channel by now knows how to write a query that we could, you know, measure the, the change, right? So at the, uh, well, actually, I actually think this is the beginning of the month. Yeah, that's right, the beginning of the month. So at the beginning of the month, we're measuring the reps, we're measuring the weight, and we have that beginning of the month. This is where SQL is incredibly useful, and this is a great example of where no SQL is actually very useful because what we really want to see is the report each day. And by the way, the report, again, is going to look like kind of on the right side of the screen. It's going to kind of have that broken out, right? So I don't actually think that SQL or NoSQL are better than each other. And actually some SQL engines and NoSQL engines are starting to kind of include the other. Um, but this is kind of an example. And there's a lot of data like this. There's a lot of document oriented data, anything that you can think of being put, let's say on an HTML page, or that you might store in Word. But there's also points in that data, Keteris, Paribus, those type of things where we might actually want to go ahead and do some some care, comparison me measurements, in which case SQL is good. And since most of us have a lot of SQL tools, and min many of us have worked with SQL Lite, um, you know, for instance, on a let's say an Android tool, we could have it to where a person could save their workout. So people ask me, well, how is the structure of the entry on the application going to be handled in that NoSQL? And it's well, the application is going to have to de be designed for someone being flexible and entering flexible things. Like if you think about it, how would you design an application where a person could enter, let's say, a set, right? Um, or I'm sorry, an exercise, a uh, number of sets, a number of reps, and a weight, but they could also enter an exercise in just a time, or an exercise and a weight and a distance. And 
in order to do that, we have to provide them with flexibility. Like how would you do that, for instance, with an HTML page, right? You might have like headers, you might have a list, and so you're gonna parse it all in your application and then you're gonna insert that into the, uh, the database, in this case, MongoDB. So this is just an example of when, all this is an example, it's not the, you know, not every application is built this way, but when you could use both. Sure, we could have, you know, 100 tables. I think what I figured out one time, if I tried to do all of my exercises on the back end of a SQL Server back end, I'd have, you know, 100, 150 tables. The transformations are gonna be enormously cost, costly. Um, it's just much better to do NoSQL and then have baselines be in the SQL, uh, SQL Server database where I can do a quick measurement.